Greetings in the name of peace. Today, I will be going over how Jesus is the governor of the house of Israel. And you will know that he was not the king of the house of Israel. Matthew 2 and 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. We have scriptures that call Jesus the king of kings, the Lord of lords. We have scriptures that call Jesus the prince of the kings of the earth. We have scriptures that call Jesus governor. Which one is true? They all can't be true. They all can't be true. And let's go over Moses. Moses was a king. Moses was a lawgiver. Deuteronomy 33, 4 and 5. Moses commanded us a law. Even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun. When the heads of the people in the tribes of Israel were gathered together. A governor is not the same as a king. Jesus was a governor of the house of Israel. And he did not come with a new law. Rather he confirmed the Torah and the Gospels. He confirmed the law of Moses. He said think not that I've come to destroy the law. But to fulfill it. Let's go to Nehemiah 6 and 1. Now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built it the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sambalat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? That proves that Nehemiah was a type and shadow of Jesus. Peace be upon him. When we look at that word, messengers, and I sent messengers unto them. Didn't Jesus say I would send the comforter unto you? All right, he said it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. And why would he come down from the heavens? All right, when he has sent the messenger, when he has sent the comforter. Let's go on to Nehemiah 6 and 4. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner in the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Geshmo said, That thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. So we know right here, Nehemiah was being accused of being a king, Nehemiah was a governor, Jesus was being accused of being a king, and he was a governor. Now, let me get that that proves that Nehemiah was a governor. Oh, I'm going to get that for you. Nehemiah 5.14. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, Jesus was a governor, Nehemiah was a governor. Oh, I've been going over types and shadows. And you're going to understand that types and shadows is so important. Why? Because when Bible corruption take place, we can look back at that shadow. Just like Joseph, he was a shadow and type of Jesus. He has 60 parallels between him and Jesus, and he did not die. It was a lie. It was a lie that was perpetrated upon him. And we know that there is a huge lie going on about how Jesus was crucified. But if we look back at the type and shadow of Joseph, we see that it was a lie. It was not true. Joseph is alive and Jesus is alive. Going on, let's go to verse 7. And thou hast also appointed prophets, 
Didn't Jesus appoint disciples to preach of thee at Jerusalem? Didn't his disciples preach of him? Jesus? Yes. Saying there is a king in where? In Judah. There is a huge lie perpetrated that Jesus is king and there's not one scripture where Jesus ever called himself a king. When we go to John 6, 15, and when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. He refused to be king. Right here on earth, when he was here, he refused to be a king. Going on to this parallel between Nehemiah and Jesus, we see that an Arabian is involved. And why? Because the true messenger and the true king would come from this nation. And we see that he is against this saying. That you are calling yourself a king. And it was a big lie. Because Jesus never called himself a king. But there's been a huge lie perpetrated. In the book of Psalms 119. It says the proud have forged against me. It says the proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. There's been a lie forged on Jesus. There's been a lot of letters written in his name. That he had nothing to do with. When they asked him if he was good, he said, there's not one good but God. So we know that the gospel of John is a complete forgery. There's forgery all through it. There's truth in it, and it's mixed with falsehood. And we know that God doesn't lie, and it's impossible for God to lie. So let's go on and look at this parable. Genesis 42, 6. And Joseph was governor over the land. We know just like Joseph, just like Jesus, just like Jesus, just like Jonah. Jonah didn't die. Jesus gave him a sign. He gave them a sign. Jonah didn't die. Joseph didn't die. Jesus didn't die. It was a big lie. He was never crucified. I'm here to tell the truth. And I'm here to expose the lies that are going on all over the world. Many of these Israelite camps are false. They just like Christians because they have believed the lie. Now let's go to an instance in the scripture where comforters are being sent. And I'm going to prove to you that the comforter has already came and he's already gone. Now let's go to the story where the comforter has been sent. Starting off in 2 Samuel verse starting off in 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died and Hanan his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan the son of Nahash as his father show kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of his servants for his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. So David sent out comforters. Another word for comforters is messengers. He sent out messengers, or another word for messengers in this case would be servants. Jesus said that he will be sending a, ser a Jesus said, I will be sending a comforter. All right. In other scriptures, it says the father will send a comforter. Jesus said, I will be sending a comforter and he will lead and guide you into all truth. Speaking of a male, speaking of a man, he said he. He, he, he will guide you into all truth. So the same thing that was going on in Nehemiah's day, Nehemiah sent out messengers. David sent out messengers. Jesus sent out the last and final messenger. Wake up, do your research and study. He sent comforters for kindness. He sent out comforters 
to show kindness because the king of Ammon died and now there was a new king. Jesus did the exact same thing. He sent out a comforter. Why? Because the nation of Israel was no more. All right. There was a new king over the house of Israel and it wasn't him. He's only governor. All right. He's just like Haman parading the real Mordecai around town. Y'all need to wake up. So when he sent forth this comforter, and I'm going to prove to you that this comforter is no joke. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speak of a word against the son of man, Jesus, why? Because there's so many lies placed upon him. There's going to be no sins held upon a person who speaks evil of Jesus. That's been well established by the man himself. And for you camps preaching that Jesus is the Holy Ghost, that don't make no sense if be saying whosoever speak of a word against me will be forgiven. But if you speak a word against me, it won't be forgiven. That don't make no sense. Get the hell out of here with that. So now we understand that the son of man, when you say something against him, it will be forgiven. But whosoever speak of against the Holy Ghost, because he has the truth about the man who is sending the comforter. He has the truth about himself. And that's what he said the Holy Ghost would do. He shall bear record of me. He shall testify of me. The true comforter is going to tell the truth about Jesus and expose the lie. And this is exactly what the last and final messenger has done. Now we're going to understand there's going to be some repercussions. When you speak against the Holy Ghost, there's going to be trouble. All hell is going to break loose. And this is going to be seen right in the same chapter we was reading in 2 Samuel chapter 10. Going on to verse, let's go to verse 3. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan, their Lord, thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he have sent comforters unto thee? Have not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? So he's sending kindness because the new king of Ammon, Hanan, father has died, Nahash, and they are treating it in total shame. They are treating it. They're doing despite to the spirit of grace. They are blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. Right here in the scriptures. This is exactly what they do it. Let's go to verse 4. Wherefore Hanan took David's servants. And shaved off the one half of their beard. And cut off their garments in the middle. Even to their buttocks. And sent them away. So he sent the messengers to them with the news and all they want to do is go in this man's personal business. They want to get on his dirty laundry and they want to get on his marital issues. You know who I'm talking about. You know what they done against the prophet. Peace of blessings be upon him. And now we see in verse 5, when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. So now you know David is pissed off. He's hurt at the same time. He was willing to show kindness to a person of another nation. And these people have totally shamed his messenger just like you have. You've been shaming the messenger. You've been getting on his marital issues. Shame on you. Let me tell you something. You are blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. So now David is pissed off. In 2 Samuel 10, 6, And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, because all of you with that gossip in his dirty laundry, y'all stank before the messenger. The children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of beth Rope. And the Syrians of Zobah, 20,000 footmen, and of King Maka, a thousand men, and of Ishtob, 12,000 men.
So now they scared. So they hiring all these soldiers to come against David. Why? Because they have just blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the hosts of the mighty men. Now Joab was the commander of David's army. And this man was a warrior. He was a very, very skilled warrior. He would kill his opponents in the fifth rib. And all the hosts of the mighty men. So David is calling his best warriors right now. Because they just blasphemed. 2 Samuel 10, 8. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array at the entering end of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah and of Rehob and of Ishtab and Maka were by themselves in the field. And when Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice men of Israel and put them in array against the Syrians and the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai his brother that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon and he said if the Syri and he said if the Syrians and he said if the Syrians be too strong for me then thou shalt help me but if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will come and help thee. Be of good courage and let us play the men for our people and for the cities of our God. And the Lord do that which seem of him good. And Joab drew nigh and the people that were with him unto the battle against the Syrians and they fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fled, then fled they also before Abishai and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon and came to Jerusalem. And when the Syrians saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered themselves together. And Hadarezer sent and brought out the Syrians that were behind the river. And they came to Helam and Shobach. And the captain of the host of Hadarezer went before them. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together and passed over Jordan. And he came to Helam and the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with them. And the Syrians fled before Israel. And David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians and 40,000 horsemen and smote Shobach the captain of their host who died there. See, all hell breaks loose when you speak against the messenger when you speak against the holy ghost it will not be forgiven of you in this world nor in the world to come and i'm gonna give you a whole nother story on this same instance because i don't like to do the island scriptures you got many of these israelite camps bringing out psalms 83 they only have one precept of Ishmael, Ishmael saying this and saying this is in confederacy and they just have island scriptures when the truth about the book of Psalms is that the book of Psalms died. God told Kadar to sing the new song. All right. So all those Psalms is obsolete because God has moved on to another nation. God removes the mighty from their seats and he exalts them of low degree. Speaking of the Psalms in the Quran, the Bible says God gave David. The book of Psalms. What is that saying? He gave that book that was for the Benny Israel David unto the Ishmael David. The type and channel. He gave the song book that belonged to the nation of Israel. To the real Israel. To the real Ishmael of 12 princes just like Israel. It's just that simple. Jacob was a supplanter. He supplanted Esau, and guess what? Jacob has been supplanted by Ishmael. So let's go to another story that's going to bring out this same instance. This is going to be in 1 Samuel chapter 25. This is of Nabal. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, and buried him in the house at Ramadan, or Ramah, and David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now, the wilderness of Paran is the city of Mecca. And there was a man in Mon 
whose possessions were in Carmel, and the man was very great, and he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. So this represents the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel have done foolishly. Now the name of the man was Nabal, just like I just said. In the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. He was of a mighty man of faith, Caleb. Verse 4, and David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. He's cutting up the sheep. That's exactly what the house of Israel did to the prophets. They slew the messengers that was sent unto them. They even thought to kill Christ, but God took him up. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. All right. And Jesus said, I will send the comforter unto you. All right. And he will testify of me. So this is another type and shadow of John 14, 26, John 15, 26, second Samuel chapter 10, verse one on down. This is the same story of God allowing messengers to be sent to the house of Israel. In the form of the Holy Ghost. And they are doing the Holy Ghost despite. So now when we go to verse 5. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men. Get you up to Carmel. Go there. And go to Nabal. And greet him. Be kind to him. In my name. This is what it's all about. It's all about the name. It's all about the name. And thus shall ye say to him that live up in prosperity, peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Now we the only ones that speak like that. Peace be upon them. Peace be upon yours. Peace be upon you. That's how we talk. Peace be upon him. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds which were with us, we heard them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them all the while they were in Carmel. Ask the young men, and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thy hand, unto thy servants, and to thy son David. So look, man, we've been looking out for you. We've been making sure everybody in the city is safe. We've been like a wall to y'all. We hurting, man. We are hurting. Help us out. And let's see what goes on. Verse 9, And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David, and ceased. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? Who is Muhammad? Who is he? And who is the son of Jesse? So we just went over. Whatever you speak about, Jesus will be forgiven because his whole message has been perpetrated a fraud. They, they lied on this man so much to the point that God is not even going to hold anybody accountable for what you say about this man. But whatever you say against the Holy Ghost, it will not be forgiven you in this world or in the world to come. All right. Let's go on. There be many servants nowadays that break up away every man from his master. So we say, who is Jesus and who is David? Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? So this man just blasphemed against the Holy Ghost because he blasphemed against David, who is a type and shadow of Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. So David's young men turned their way. And notice, it said 10 men. Who is famous for the 10? Muhammad entered Mecca with 10,000. 629 CE in December. 
David is famous. The women were singing. Saul has slain his thousands, and David is tens of thousands. And we proved that the thousands represent the nation of Israel because Nabal had about a few thousand. He just had about a few thousand. And if we go on, 1 Samuel 25 and 12, so David's young men turned their way and went again and told him all those sayings. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded up his sword. And there went up after him about 400 men and 200 men a bold by the stuff. See, all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose when you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. And that's exactly what these people have been doing. And I'm approved to you. This is all going into the prophet Mohammed, peace be upon him, his marital issues. Because if we go on, look what it says. 1 Samuel 25, 14. But one of the young men told Abigail, a baby gal, Nabal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master. You can't serve two masters, y'all. All right. And he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us. And we were not hurt. Neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by day and night. Both by night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son. Uh-oh, there's the problem right there. Y'all getting in trouble with that son stuff. Jesus is not the son of God and Jesus is not God. For he is such a son of Baal that a man cannot speak to him. And that is speaking of the nation of Israel as a whole. Jesus called them serpents. He called them vipers and he called them devils. He didn't call no other nation devils. All right. He called Pilate a fox, but he called the southern kingdom devils. And that's exactly who he was speaking to in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9. He was calling them devils because Israel is the only nation that had a synagogue. First Samuel 25, 18. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dress and five measures of parched corn and a hundred clusters of raisins and 200 cakes of figs and laid them on donkeys, laid them on asses. And when she said unto her servants, go on before me, behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. I ain't telling that fool nothing. He just blasphemed against the Holy Ghost. He just spoke evil. Of the Holy Spirit. And it was so as she rode on the ass. That she came down by the covert of the hill. And behold David and his men came down against her. And she met them. Now David has said surely in vain. Have I kept all this fellow have in the wilderness. So that nothing was missed of all that pertained unto him. And he hath requited me evil for good. He has spoken evil against the Holy Ghost. This is all going into blasphemy. 1 Samuel 25, 22. So more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain by him by the morning light any that piss up against the wall. See, I told you this is going into the marital business of the prophet. Because why in 2 Samuel chapter 10 is getting graphic and here is getting graphic. This is about the dirty laundry. This is about the lies. This is about the reproach of the little girl that the prophet Muhammad has upon him. We're going to see 1 Samuel 25, 23. And when Abigail, or a baby gal, saw David, she hasted and lighted off the donkey and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be and let thine handmaid I pray thee, speak in thine audience, 
and hear the words of thy handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of the devil, this Baal, even the Baal. For as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name. So she had to totally disassociate herself with any religion that is polytheist. And she had to join herself to the true monotheistic religion of the world, Islam. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst sin. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself in thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. She just prophesied of her husband's death. Okay, which was the nation of Israel is dead. All y'all Israelite camps, y'all trying to resurrect something that's dead. It is dead. Even the apostle Paul went by saints. And we, you're going to see who those saints is. You're going to see who the real saints is. And don't give me your Psalms 148, 14 precept. You're going to see who the real saints of the Most High is. All right. They are those who do not associate any partners with him. First Samuel 25, 27. And now this blessing which thine handmaid have brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord, a sure house, because my Lord fight up the battles of the Lord. Jesus was not a warrior. All right. Jesus was a pacifist. Uh, according to the scriptures, if it's true, he told them to turn the cheek. If someone smites you, turn to the other cheek. All right. And y'all believe the Bible is true and it has no mistakes. So, yeah, that's true. He was not a warrior. All right, when they came to get him, supposedly, Peter struck off one of the guards' ears. And Jesus healed the man, put the ear back on, and told Peter, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So this is speaking of the Deuteronomy 18.18 18 prophet who is well affiliated with shedding blood. All right, 1 Samuel 25.28 I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fight up the battles of the Lord. And evil have not been found in thee all thy days. Now that's speaking of the messenger. That is speaking of the messenger prophetically, okay? Because his reputation is flawless, all right? The Lord chose a man of a good reputation, 1 Samuel 25, 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thine enemies. Them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord According to all the good that he have spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over the house of Israel is the Deuteronomy 18, 18 prophet Mohammed peace and blessings be upon him that this shall be no grief unto thee nor offense of heart unto my Lord either that thou hast shed blood causeless or that my Lord have avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember, remember thy handmaid. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice, and blessed be thou, which thou hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood, and from avenging myself with mine own hand. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which have kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light, 
any that pisseth against the wall. Let me tell you something. Y'all fools. Speaking against the prophet. Bringing up the little girl that they say he married at that age. You have no knowledge of that. All right. And according to the Bible, he is justified regardless. I just like to hit the hammer on the head. Okay. Because the truth is the truth. God has wiped away the man's reproach. And we're going to read that. First Samuel 25, 35. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him and said unto her, go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal and behold, he held a feast in his house like the feast of a king. You see that like the feast of a king and Nabal's heart was merry within him for he was very drunken. Wherefore, she told him nothing less or more until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was going out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and became as a stone. Now this can go in prophetically a metaphor because this all goes to these nations in prostration to Allah right now today. We have men of every nation in Allah prostrating. Like a stone fell down in prostration to the most high. But in this actual case, Nabal died. First Samuel 25, 38. And it came to pass about 10 days after that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. And when David heard that Nabal was dead, he said, blessed be the Lord that have pleaded the cause. Key word of my reproach. God almighty has pleaded the cause of the prophet Muhammad's reproach from the hand of Nabal and have kept his servant from evil. God has kept the messenger from evil. For the Lord have returned the wickedness of Nabal upon his own head. All of y'all gossiping about that, that is coming back to your own head. And David sent and communed with a baby gal or Abigail to take her to him to wife. So in this story, we see that this woman literally kept her city. She did. It was going to go down. She saved her household. The only person she couldn't save was her husband. All right. She was able to spare him about 10 days. All right. She was able to pacify the wrath of God for a moment, but it eventually fell on you fools. All you fools gossiping about who Mohammed picked to marry. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. You are blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to prove it. Let me take you to Deuteronomy 18, 18 and verse 19. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. That word brethren goes into countrymen. Like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. Now the Ishmaelites are brothers to the Beni Israel. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. In other words, this book that this man has is going to endure forever. It's going to be preserved. Now, we can't say that about the entire Bible. Some of it is true because the Bible has, has some truth in it, but some of it's not. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. All hell is going to break loose. All hell is going to break loose. I will require it of him. This precept in Deuteronomy 18, 19 goes exactly with Matthew chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. It's synonymous. These scriptures are precepts one with another. 
He is the Deuteronomy 18 prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. When they asked John the Baptist if he was the Christ, he said, I am not. When they asked him if he was Elijah, he said, I am not. But when they asked him, are you that prophet? He said, no. No. He said, no. All right. And they asked, they go on to ask him. What? He said, I'm just a voice. I ain't nobody. And that's what's wrong with you Israelite camps. Y'all caught up in the pride of y'all heart. God took the kingdom from Israel and gave it to Ishmael. God exalted them of low degree and he removed the mighty from their seat. So I wonder what you guys are going to be calling yourselves next year or when the truth finally comes out that the kingdom has been taken from Israel. I wonder what your bishops, your deacons and your captains and your officers are going to do. All right. It's all coming down. It's all coming down. Because y'all is just like the Israelites whom Moses warned not to go up. He told them, the Lord is not with you. The Lord, he told them plainly, the Lord is not with you. And they were smitten unto Hormah. He told them they wouldn't listen. You cannot do anything outside of the messenger. Y'all are Christians. IUIC is Christian. Israelite camps are Christian. Y'all believe Jesus was crucified. Y'all believe in one wife. Y'all believe that the Bible has no mistakes. Y'all believe everything the Christian believe. The only difference is y'all believe Jesus black and they believe Jesus white. Some of them. Not all of them. Not everybody thinks Jesus is white. All right. There are some people who know that Jesus is black, but Jesus being black didn't have anything to do with us being kicked out and cast out the nation of Israel. Jesus went around casting out devils, casting out devils, casting out devils, casting out devils. And guess what? God cast Israel out of Israel in 70 A.D. So there you have it. I just went over how Jesus is governor. He's governor. There's not one scripture you can prove to me and show me that he said with his own lips that he is king. There's not one scripture. We see that Mohammed, peace be upon him, has been selected as the ruler over the house of Israel. He is the real Mordecai. He is the real messenger that has been hated. He's been the messenger that. You have been speaking evil against. Not Jesus. Everybody loves Jesus. Everybody loves what he says. Okay. And that's because his message has been watered down. And there's many lies in his name. But thank God for the prophet Mohammed, the comforter, the one that was sent to tell the truth about Jesus and to tell us the truth that he is not God, that he is a man. All right, that he's Messiah. All right, Muhammad didn't glorify himself. There's no book in the Quran named after his mom, but there is a book named after Jesus' mom. He glorified Jesus. He told the truth about Jesus. And that's the truth of the whole matter. I hope y'all got all those precepts, and I hope you reconsider and study and make sure that you are in the truth, and the truth is in Islam. Shalom. Salam alaikum.